Okay, yeah. Um, I'm going to need some help, like Manuel, uh, in, in order to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm intentionally challenged on, on uh, electronic things and so on. Um, but uh, the idea of, of uh, orthogonal remarks was that I, you know, I would, I would sit here and I would, and I would uh, try, try to think of something that, that the other speakers hadn't said. Well, it's a pretty hard act to follow. I, 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 well, I do have one, one observation, and that is uh, uh, in the morning, uh, Prabhakar mentioned a uh, lesson that he learned from Dick, and that is uh, 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 if you can postpone a decision, postpone it. Uh, and, and this was applied to an online algorithm uh, for, for caching. So now Jeremy just told us the opposite. Uh, he, uh, when, when Dick works with Vazirani and Vazirani, uh, they start out and immediately make a decision and they, and they sort. Uh, according to a random ordering, while well, in the other one they, they, divert, they def, uh, deferred sorting as long as they could. So uh, the, the thing you can learn from this is that uh, uh, give different advice on different days and then you can always quote yourself. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, now um, another thing uh, uh, I, I got in, in, in Prabhakar's uh, remark is um, oh, okay. I need somebody who can who can get me started on on this Macintosh here. It's basically. <clears throat> Drew, yeah, actually, I, I might be able to do it as, as soon as you get it wired. As soon as you get it wired in. Um, but anyway, uh, Propaker said that uh, he asked if we we could try to imagine uh, uh, what it was like in the seventies. And I'm going to ask you to try to imagine what it was like in the 50s. Now, this might be a, a little harder, but I'm going to try to explain uh, uh, what it was like in, in the 50s when, uh, uh, when uh, okay, now we have to get this so that uh, it, it shows the whole page. So I, so I need to, to save. Uh, this is, so I'm, I want to show you uh, uh, Dick's PhD thesis, which was uh, dated January uh, 1959. And so Dick was 23 years old, and uh, uh, the world was, was uh, of course, a lot different in those days, but especially with respect to computer science, because um, it, as far as I knew, there was almost nobody in the world was, was doing computer science and mathematics at the same time. These were two separate worlds, and I was a math major, and I worked at the computing center. But when I traveled from one building to another, uh, it, 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 I, I just went. It, 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 it was completely different. Okay, no, no, no. We, it, we don't want this. This is this is going to. Okay, is it going to stop there? Okay, so here is here is. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, so, so, so Dick, at one point, uh, rather early, Dick gave me a copy of his thesis, and, and I have to admit, I never read it until yesterday. Uh, <laughs> um, but, I, but it's really interesting. <laughs> uh, and so I want to show you something. Okay. I, I don't want to read out loud. I, I want to disactivate. Full screen, okay, so uh, <laughs> here's the thesis. It's, it's, it's still in the, it's automated mode? Okay, let's see, we'll share, full screen mode, yeah. Let's, let's look at this read out loud, whatever that is. <laughs> it, it looks, it, no, it looks unequal. Okay, read mode, show high. Okay, well, um, there's the, <laughs> okay, so I've, yeah, we're, we're, you're giving away all my secrets here. <laughs> you can blank the screen. Um, so uh, I, I first, uh, I, I, I think I first met Dick actually, in, I, I, I'd corresponded with him a little bit, uh, 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 well, no, indirectly through, uh, through a mutual friend, uh, Ray Miller, who had come to Caltech and I, and I got to know Ray. And, and so I wrote uh, 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 to Ray about some work that he'd been doing with Dick during the 60s. But I think the first time I actually met Dick was 
was in the uh, fall of, um, of uh, 1968. Uh, I, I, that was the year I was living in Princeton, and I went to the uh, uh, stock conference. It was called SWAT conference in those days, switching an automaton theory. And uh, it was in Schenectady. I think I met Dick at that time. And then, then he came out to, uh, uh, to Princeton uh, uh, to visit us. Uh, and so that would have been uh, just at about the time he was, he was also uh, 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 arriving at Berkeley. And, uh, and, and my wife remembers that, uh, uh, that, that, that he had come and he, was, he, he would talk about uh, how he was always uh, 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 working out at the gym and carrying weight and lifting weights and things like this. And, and she said, oh, that's nothing, I, I, I have two uh, I, I, have, I have two children, and, and I, I'm carrying 40 pounds every day. And, and, and she said uh, she didn't think Dick understood uh, uh, what, what she meant uh, uh, until 20 years later when Jeremy came along. <laughs> okay, so um, now it, it, look, it looks, like, looks like we're getting going. Um, so now, it, uh, it, as I say, this is January 59, and, and nobody, uh, uh, almost nobody, uh, thought that, that there, was, there was a connection between mathematics and computer science. Uh, in, in, the, in the computer room, uh, we filled with stuff and, and, until, and, until we thought it was right. We were using some kind of mathematics, but not, not the kind uh, that that uh, uh, really was uh, deserving of a name, computer science, except of course uh, things like numerical analysis. <clears throat> um, and uh, and now you already saw my, this uh, uh, frontispiece that that came with his thesis. Uh, if you look closely at the bottom, it says R O T H. So this one must have been drawn by Paul Roth. But anyway, this came with my thesis. This is the Kibitz proof. Artificial Ruschevsky proxy, and uh, and Dick and 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 Paul Roth uh, uh, were co-authors of a paper at the second uh, uh, Fox conference. I mean, stock stock Fox conference <laughs> uh, in 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 sixty one, uh, and 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 so they were co-workers, and so uh, I, I uh, and and. Uh, Let's let's look in. Whoa! I, I, I see. I went the wrong way. This way. So you want to get some idea what what's in the thesis? And uh, in the fifties, uh, when we did programming, we didn't have uh, uh, very high level programming languages. Fortran had just come out, but um, uh, but, but everybody used used flowcharts, and 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 so Dick's thesis was lar uh, uh, largely based on the, uh, uh, the fact that. That uh, uh, flowcharts are are a nice class of directed graphs uh, for which you uh, which you can use arguments based on matrix theory and topology, and so uh, he starts out at the top and he show, shows a flowchart, and then um, uh, in in, in, this, in the middle one he shows how you can abstract that into in, into a nice directed graph uh, where, uh, and. Uh, uh, and, and, and you shrink uh, uh, some, some of the vertices uh, so that uh, the directed graph is a little simpler than the, the flow charts that people were drawing. And then, and then he shows that uh, how, how you can, can uh, you know, make a matrix that, uh, uh, that represents all the paths in the flow chart. And, and, he, and he wants to consider uh, uh, questions like, uh, uh, are there any uh, are there any parts uh, uh, that, that can never be any edges that can never be used in a in a, in a uh, path from the start vertex to the final vertex, um, and and so he multiplies the matrix, uh, takes powers of the matrix, and he and he throws out uh, uh, terms that are uh, are redundant and, and so on. So so he he developed. Uh, a, a kind of mathematics that was absolutely unheard of at that time uh, uh, as application to uh, computer programming. And then I learned that the, uh, of, of two papers of, that, that he wrote at, uh, during his student days, that, uh, not on his resume, and, and, and uh, so I don't know if these are the first he wrote, but here's one called The Assembly of Address-Free Programs for Automatic Bill Calculation. 
at, uh, at Harvard, a, a comp lab, and then uh, I, I, I referenced 20 at the bottom here, uh, was written for General Electric Company, Aircraft Nuclear Propulsion, about methods of evaluating Cajun Fortran for use in specific, specific application. Now, but the real mind-blowing thing for me was when I got to chapter three and I saw this. And this was an example, one of the major examples in his thesis. Uh, and <coughs> it's, it's, it's written in a machine language of UNIVAC 1. And, and this is uh, 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 one of the very first computers. And the UNIVAC 1 had, had 1,000 words of memory. Each word was 12 six-bit characters. Uh, so each word uh, uh, could, could hold not only decimal digits, uh, but it did decimal arithmetic, but, it, it, but not only decimal arithmetic, uh, but also had, had uppercase letters A through Z and, and, uh, and, and, and some punctuation marks, like you, like you see the dashes here. And so um, this, is the, this is a program in the machine language for, uh, for, for UNIVAC 1, which I hadn't seen for years and years, and I, I went to the internet in order to get a manual to, uh, to figure out what, what was going on. And, and um, uh, you know, I, because I had never seen a program that Dick, that Dick had written, I, you know, I knew uh, 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 of, all the, uh, of all the great theoretical work, um, um, but I, uh, I, uh, I never understood why he had the knack for devising a theory that would actually be relevant to practice. And, uh, and so the first instruction, it, it, this is two columns, that, it, you know, the, these are instructions from triple zero to zero fifty-nine, and each, each word contains two instructions, the first six digits, uh, 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 you know, the, fir the, the first instruction, one, one, space, four, eight, zero, uh, uh, says, uh, it, it says, read 60, start reading 60 words from tape unit one into, into a, a block starting at address 480. And, uh, and, and the next, the other half of this word, 31 space 480, that means um, take those 60 words and actually put them in memory and start reading another 60. And so on, so, so, he, so he's starting out this program and, 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 uh, and, and, and getting the data. Uh, and then uh, at, at the end of the program, uh, uh, the, 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 the program actually stops uh, in the right-hand column at number 42, uh, that 999999, that means stop, stop the UNIVAC. Uh, uh, you know, the, in those days, uh, uh, you sat at the machine and, and, and uh, you had total control over it, and, and, uh, and, and when your program was done, you, uh, it, it, it stopped. Um, and, um, and, and the instructions in front, 61 and 62 there said, rewind tape one, rewind tape two. Okay, so this is very practical experience. Now, what does this program do? You can see at the bottom it says a program for executing the Euclidean algorithm. And so his, his example program was to, was to read in um, 100 pairs of numbers, A, I, and B, I, and, and to calculate their greatest common divisor, G, I, and, and then uh, you know, store those 100 numbers and write them out on tape two. That was the purpose of, of, the, of the program. And, uh, and so he, he, he had a, a flowchart for it, of course, and then, and then he did a lot of, uh, of theoretical examples about how, how he could, uh, uh, could deal with it. Uh, well, naturally, uh, uh, being the nitpicker that I am, and I, wa I wanted to, to you know, assess the quality of this program and see uh, <laughs> how it is. And so, and so I'm sorry to say uh, I, I found a bug. Uh, um, um, so in, in, in instruction 39, where it says dash, 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 you, it, it should have actually said K space, 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 because uh, you have to clear the L register. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise uh, there's garbage sitting at the number 100 is in the L register, and, and, and that it interferes with, with, with A, A2 and B2, um, uh, because it starts out saying, is AI greater than zero? Or, or not, and, 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 you, and you negate it. But, but the second time through, it was actually testing whether AI was, was greater than 100 instead of, of zero because, because you, you hadn't cleared the L register. But anyway, it's a, um, uh, now, um, then I, I also noticed that the, uh, 
that there was no test for zero. I mean, it, you know, if you're taking the, the, the GCD of two numbers, uh, what do you do if one of them is zero? Uh, and this program divides by zero. Uh, uh, but uh, in, in a way, you can say that's okay because uh, in the 1950s, GCD was undefined when one of them was zero. And, and, and his, in his division instruction, which is number 21 there, he has a minus after the D. And, and the minus in the Univac one said, uh, uh, if you're dividing by zero, stop the machine. Uh, <laughs> if, if, you, if you didn't have the minus there, it would interrupt to location zero and, 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 and start reading in from the tape again. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I don't know. But, but this, was, uh, uh, th this, this was pretty good. Um, but, but then I got interested in, in, the, in the calculation that he's actually do, doing of the, of the GCD because this Univac 1 was, was the world's worst machine in order to do uh, uh, integer arithmetic and number theory. I, I mean, just to accomplish a, a, a GCD algorithm was, was a heroic feat uh, on the Univac 1 because it was not designed, it was designed by people who, who thought of decimal points at the left of a word and they didn't think of integers. And, you know, so the, the, the divide instruction, the normal thing for the divide instruction is to add five uh, uh, to, to, to the answer, because that's rounding it, uh, uh, because, because you think of the decimal point at the left. And, and so he has to uh, uh, stand on his head in order, in order, to, in order to do this. Uh, and, and so actually instructions, I think it's, uh, it, starts at, um, it starts at 19 and goes all the way through 28. That's all, that's all just to, to calculate the remainder of, of, uh, of one number by another. So, so anyway, I found this quite an interesting program, uh, and and I, I wrote a Mathematica program uh, yesterday to simulate uh, uh, what he was doing because I couldn't figure out why it worked. Uh, I mean, he was he, he was shifting numbers, uh, uh, you know, here and there, and 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 so on. And so I, and so I, uh, this uh, I, I don't know. The, this is online. If you want to look at it, you can you can figure out the program. But anyway. Uh, I, 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 hear, I trace the, the calculation that it does to get a GCD, and if you look at where I, so the first things are some definitions of the function that, that simulates what, what his Univac program did. Uh, it started in five, it says, okay, let's try taking the GCD of, of two sort of random numbers, 314159 and 271828, which is everybody's favorite numbers to take GCD of, and so it goes through various uh, iterations, calculations, and, and sure enough, at the bottom, it gets the right answer, one. Okay, so here I tried another one. I took 37 times 31415 with, with 37 times 2718, and, and you see in the middle, out six is 37, right? So it's, it's doing fine, uh, but, but the next one, I took G 37 times 31459, uh, and look what the, the output was. Uh, you know, 11 million and something. So, uh, uh, hmm, what was this? Okay, I, no, I, I told you that, that we, with zero it would overflow. Um, but, but then I, I did, did some more experimenting and I finally, you see what I'm taking it, it, at step nine? Uh, GCD of, of, of uh, 200,000 plus four uh, and two, and the answer is 200,000. Now there was, there's something going on here and it's, and it's the Univac one that's at fault. Uh, uh, because he, he, he claimed that the, uh, that the routine would work for any, any 11 digit uh, numbers. But in fact, uh, uh, this is the smallest example, but, uh, but the, uh, uh, what the actual conditions are that the, uh, uh, that, that the smaller number has to be at most uh, six digits and the ratio of the, of, of the larger to the smaller has to be at most 10 to the fifth or something. Otherwise, uh, it, it, uh, it screws up. So, so anyway, I believe this is, uh, in one, it was a really great experience for, for him in order to uh, uh, sort of get grounded and develop beautiful theory the rest of his life. Also, it, it probably is re why he went to IBM uh, afterwards because, instead of Univac. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, and, uh, uh, but it, it's, it's good grounding and I think maybe, maybe for, uh, for Jeremy, uh, Unix was good grounding and so on. For, Similar reason. Now I want to I, I, I want to um, fast forward uh, uh, to 1971, 
uh, when, when I began a, uh, a weekly seminar in combinatorics uh, meeting at my house. And uh, uh, this, um, uh, this is the, this is the first uh, this this was the first lecture in this series October of seventy one, um, and and uh, we had the tradition that I, I, I got myself a nice big uh, uh, book that lawyers used uh, a, a big leisure book which got nicely bound, and uh, and open it up and and every week everyone who came to the seminar signed their names, and I. And it's precious now to see all these all these signatures, uh, uh, you know, so, so many years later. Um, uh, but you, but here we see. Uh, 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 well, I, I gave the first lecture, and Dick, Dick's name is right there at the top of the second column, um, and uh, and you recognize it. Um, uh, well, a lot of other people from Berkeley, like Larry Carter. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, okay. So Elwin, Elwin Burlicamp. Uh, you see Ron Rivest there, but of course he's at Stanford, um, and uh, and so on. Um, so um, uh, it was December of that year when the lecturer was R. M. Carp, and his lecture was reducibilities between combinatorial programs. Uh, this was, uh, uh, so this was, uh, I, I don't know if it was the very first uh, public announcement of it. Uh, the, maybe you'd spoken at Berkeley, however, I see that uh, I, uh, some of the first people on the list here are, are, are your students from, from Berkeley. <laughs> Although here's David Gale too, but, but you know, Norman Sada. Um, th there are a lot of people here from, from Berkeley uh, on the list, so like, uh, so, so maybe you hadn't spoken at Berkeley, but anyway, this 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 must have been one of the first. We must have been. It was the first. What it was? Yeah. So, so this was. We were the first to hear about the, about these twenty-one problems, uh, <laughs> at this time. And and these are the, you know, you're Richard Stanley, you see Ashok Chandra, Bob Tarjan, uh, uh, John Gill, Ron Fagan, um, you know, Hal Gabo, uh, Barbara Gross. Here's. From Berkeley, David Luck and Bob Floyd, and so on. So this was the, the this was the uh, 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 the dawn of that. Now uh, he, he spoke again in 1976, and his topic this time was probabilistic analysis of a heuristic set covering algorithm. And actually, this is uh, orthogonal to what other people have been talking about today, pretty much, because the, he, he had a, a, a dozen or more papers uh, with probabilistic analysis in the title, and those are the ones that are closest to my own heart because they they, they relate uh, uh, most directly to uh, real computer programs uh, uh, instead of worst case analysis, but uh, but but saying what what can we expect uh, to happen. And uh, and a set covering is uh, is of course one of the uh, NP hard problems that 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 we still uh, are faced with, and so we want to know not only the worst case, but but what is it like when you have set covering? And and, uh, and so this is a beautiful result, not too, not as well known as it should be, because it was published in this in this book by Joe Traub, uh, Algorithms and Complexity, that that uh, you had to buy in order to read it. Uh, <laughs> And so you can find it in the library, but anyway, uh, 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 very, and I'm, I'm finally getting around to writing about covering in about a year. Uh, all, you know, all, all through the 70s, I thought I was going to be coming over to Berkeley to talk to, to Dick about th things like this, but but uh, it'll be about a year that, that I want to be talking with you about <laughs> as I write up uh, 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 this the. the um, well, the average cases of these uh, important algorithms. Okay, now um, a little more about this seminar, and that is a, a mystery, um, because as I'm looking through the book, I, 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 I you know, I, I, I showed you the, the things on the first line, and you see Dick's signature there. Uh, first, it was Dick. There was a Dick Carp, and then there's Richard Carp, and then there's there's Dick Carp at uh, uh, 76. Now, so I, so I know that uh, on the one occasion when he spoke, he, he signed as Richard Carp, and the second time he signed as Dick Carp, uh, because I know he was there that day. However, uh, on the, in 1972, in December, when Ron Graham was talking, uh, people also mentioned their affiliation after they signed in, and look at there's Dick Carp Stanford. Now, 
now we had a student, Richard A. Karp, who always said, you know, I'm not the real one. And, uh, <laughs> and so, so, uh, uh, you know, so, so uh, uh, this was probably him. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, in 75, when Percy Diaconis spoke, uh, we have this signature of Dick Karp here. And then um, uh, Mike, Gary and Johnson, uh, in March, uh, we have a signature, Dick Karp. And then Andy Yao spoke in 75 too, and there's Dick Karp. And then in 79, when Lovas talked, we have Richard Karp. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's authentic, but which of the others is authentic? This is the, mis the mystery. Uh, maybe you can help me solve that, okay. Now, um, I, I'm about done, but I, I did want to say, I, I, uh, you know, you know, people brought up all the, besides all the wonderful research and, and uh, also his community service, and, and I was looking at the, at the Stock Fox bibliography that, that uh, David Johnson put together uh, 25 years ago. And, uh, and at that time, it was a survey of the first uh, 30 years of, of the, uh, both the Stock and Fox conferences. And at that time, uh, well, 32 years, I guess, because Cause David gave statistics at the end, and uh, and, and so so Dick was the was the uh, on the program committee more nine times, uh, and and the second most uh, uh, common was was uh, people who served seven times. Uh, so so he 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 did more service on program committees than anybody else. Uh, he also was the was. Uh, Longest in what, what uh, John, Dave Johnson called longevity, uh, which was the, uh, the, the, dis, the, the the time difference between the first uh, your, your first uh, paper in in these conferences and and the last, and uh, and, and and so he had a 31 year record of, of longevity, and the second second place was 29. Uh, uh, so um, the most imp uh, important. Imp imp the important thing, though, to me is, the, is you know of all the awards that he that he received, I I noticed also that that Berkeley gave him its Distinguished Teaching Award in 1986. Now this is really really a, a remarkable because usually the people who get the Distinguished Teaching Award are wonderful teachers, but but that's their life, and uh, I know that I could never win a Distinguished Teaching Award. Uh, so, so this, uh, to me, is is one of the greatest, uh, 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 in a way, greatest things on his resume. It shows this really love of students. That that is why uh, uh, that is why he is well has has won the hearts of so many of us. So, thank you very much, Dick, for all these years. <laughs> You have a rebuttal? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your research done. <laughs> well, I'll be very brief. Uh, this has certainly been one of the most uh, delightful experiences of my life. I will never forget it. If uh, even a fraction of the things that were said were really true, I would be insufferable at home, <laughs> um, but uh, even though I know there's a certain amount of inflation in, in these uh, encomiums, I appreciate the spirit of it very much. Um, I would like to thank uh, Alistair, uh, Ravi, and Christos for organizing this. It was a lot of work. Also, our staff at the Simons Institute in particular, uh, Utu Uta Lorenzen Gascon uh, has worked very hard, as my, my wife, uh, Mary Jo, has also done. Uh, and uh, the last thing, the most gratifying thing of all, is that um, when I was asked to nominate speakers for this event, I thought about the people who were my most important mentors, my most important role models, uh, uh, people with whom I had worked most in a most gratifying way, and, and so these were the 
people who, in one way or another, meant the most to me. And all 13 of them, all 12 of them accepted. And Mike Luby, the 13th, would have accepted, except that he had uh, an unbreakable uh, uh, conflict. So the fact, I know how hard it is to travel and come to an event of this kind. Uh, you know, you, it takes time and effort, and uh, the fact that these dozen people were all willing to do it uh, warms my heart very much. Thanks.